Hey, I'm Mark with Best Realty, and if you are looking at doing a rent to own, you need to check out this video before you do so. Hey, everybody, Mark Salas here at Best Realty. I got a friend of mine, Craig Duncan. I consider him a uh, uh, He's an entrepreneur. He's got many different things going. He's got different businesses. He's got he's got things kicking. Every time I talk to Craig, it's like he's got something else in the hopper. So I love talking with him. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to interview Craig, and I want everybody else out there to see rent to owns. I get so many people calling me and saying, "Hey, listen, I'm interested in rent to own," or you know what, I, I saw this house and I thought it was a rent to own. And the first thing I do is I tell them the cons because in my mind, it is a con. Craig has done a rent to own on his own and we talked about it. I didn't realize until after he got into it that he was doing a rent to own. I think that's when we started doing business together actually. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't right away. But Craig is going to tell us firsthand. I'm going to tell you what I know about him. Craig's going to tell you his experience. So the first thing is, in my mind, you have all the liability but none of the benefits. And what that means is, say the roof is bad. Say it floods. They look at you and they're saying, fix it. Right. It's your house. Yes. So from a real estate standpoint and from a um, from a real estate standpoint, you're not the legal owner. You do not have the title in your name. Therefore, if you're renting to own, yes, you're renting it, you're expected to do all the repairs, a water heater goes out, a roof goes out. I mean, we're talking I mean a roof could be ten thousand dollars. Yeah, and a flooded basement could be easy ten thousand dollars especially with anything you have in, in the house exactly and they're looking at you and the way the lease is written is it's your responsibility yeah you fix it I'm, it's not my well, house it's your house it's funny he used to say that because the night it rained it rained for two days about a year ago and um, uh, I think it was March or April and uh, it, it flooded two feet of water in the basement and it's a five hundred and a half million dollar home really nice up by UCCS College so uh, I called the guy, he's on a beach in uh, Italy drinking wine, and he said, I said, what do I do, who's your maintenance guy? And he says, you're the maintenance guy. And he says, go get it, I'll reimburse you for everything. So I had to go to Lowe's, get the equipment. I had to hire my own employees to come to my home and suck water for three days. Oh, wow. And okay. yeah, it was horrible. Did he end up paying you? Never, okay. I'm not back, no. All right, no. sounds good. So here's the other thing that's huge is, you may not even be dealing with the owner of the home. And I've heard numerous stories where someone's doing a rent to own. And by the time you figure out uh, who you're actually doing business with, you realize it's not the owner. Now, Craig had this experience. Oh, yeah. He took the guy to court because they had some issues. I don't know. Well, what it was black were. mold. Uh, he never ended up fixing the damage. And I lived in the house for almost six months. And then a good friend of mine said, what's that horrible smell? And I said, well, I, I, it's come from downstairs, I think something's rotten from the mold. They took me down and explained black mold and it's permanent damage in your lungs. At that point, I refused to stop making payments on my rent until something was fixed. For three months, he kept saying, okay, I'll fix it, but it was on the first when he was coming to collect the rent, and I kept waiting and kept waiting. Finally, I got a lawyer and I went to court, and I realized I had rights. Okay, all right, yeah. So. At that point in time, when he went to court, he realized it wasn't even his house. No, it was his daughter's house. She lives in Florida. So, so yeah. So once again, I've heard this story. You may be doing business and handing over a check to someone who doesn't even own the property. So that's another issue. The one thing I told Craig is, you know what? There's not one person I know that's ever done a rent to own that ended up owning the home. That's right. I, I've never heard of one either. Yep. Ever. Yep. It's a false lie. It, it is. So really, the game is you put a large down payment down, or maybe the rent is usually, we'll call it $1,500 a month, and they charge $2,200 a right. month. So basically they're saying $700 goes towards your principal. Well, that's what he says. This is a great deal. He says, hey, I know you're, you're making good money, but give me 2,000 down. So first month, last month, uh, deposit, and then an extra two grand, and then I was paying uh, $1,850, and he was charging me 2250 and everything above that went to supposedly me owning my new home. There you go. And I lost every penny, I didn't get any equity back. And when I won the case in court, even though we do have rights and there is justice, now you gotta turn around and take him to small claims court. And even if you win, Mark, they don't have to pay you. No. So it's just a bad it. yeah, it's yeah. a bad mark on their credit. Yeah. So, so you're out of everything. So here's here's the gist. They have different structures for those for, for the rent to owns. It depends on what the owner wants 
that you're renting it from. So they can say, hey, listen, the ones I've heard is you give me a large down payment, anywhere from five to $10,000 down, and then you start paying on the property. And by the way, there's another client I had that uh, was doing a rent to home. And he was in there for three years. Uh, he missed, he didn't even miss a payment. He called and said, hey, listen, I'm gonna be a day late. They said, no problem. So, they evicted him. They evicted him. Yep, and they had a right to. Based in the lease, he was late. They had a verbal on the phone saying we're good. He didn't have anything in writing, and per their contract, he was in violation. So, the game was get him out, we have equity. So, we got two things we can sell the home and make money, or we can get someone else to give us another large down payment and we can do Try the process all yeah. over again. It's a big con. Yeah, so it, more or less it is. I look at it like a con. It's not something I do, it's not something I recommend for anybody. I think you'd be better off renting. Well, let's show them a mark on a really large street company, and at nighttime, anybody can be taken. At nighttime, I'm a detective for U.S. Judicial Services, Denver, Colorado. So I serve warrants and I do evictions. I'm a processor. And I thought I was safe because I served the law and I served warrants and I thought no one in their right mind would take advantage of someone like me. I was wrong. Yeah. And that badge held no weight in the court of law that no one cared. No. I was a fool for giving my money away. And the bad thing is it depends on the contract that you wrote or that, that you signed and that's really what dictates. So, you know, there's so many bad things, but the biggest thing that I've seen is, all right, like the mold. Right. You didn't have insurance for it. I don't even know if a tenant's insurance policy would cover it. Well, because it passed legally, along you're January, not the owner. so now you can actually sue for black mold, but not until just last January, and nobody knows it. Okay, so. all right, sounds good. And here's the other thing is, um, you're never the legal owner. So no. even on title, something happens, so say, Say you did have a major issue, okay, you had a flood. I don't know if your insurance company would cover you because you're not the owner of the property. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. So if you sign one of these lease agreements and basically you're saying I am responsible for everything because I am renting to own. You will be. Then you, in the eyes of the court, I would think that, hey, listen, they're going to say, you signed it. It says in black and white right here, you're responsible for everything. If you didn't have an insurance to, policy to take care of it, that's your problem. Right. What about a roof? You know, we talked about a roof that was bad, and if you get something flooding, I, once again, I can't see a tenant's policy, insurance policy, taking care of a roof for a property you don't own. And then tax benefits, that's another one. So, you know, when you own a home, one of the benefits is you get to claim it on taxes. That's right. Well, legally, you're not the owner. You're renting. You can't claim rent on taxes, at least not to my knowledge. It's something that you may want to talk to an accountant about, but that's a problem. You're paying for upkeep, you're paying for repairs, you're paying additional on top of the rent, and by the way, you can't even claim any of that on taxes. So, Not a bit. Yeah. Not a bit. Hey, thank you so much for talking with me well, today. Well, I'm going to say one last thing. Every since my problem, um, Mark has opened up my eyes to becoming a homeowner and a renter, and I've been working diligently to do that. And you know, he has actually given me hope that I can't own my own home after all the losses I've taken.